always shape it down here a little bit just makes it look nicer make a slight S shape here and then look at it from the side make sure that we're good with this alright so it's nice and smooth we have a tiny bit of a break right here so we'll fill that in make it nice and even so we have the basic shape from the outside next thing we have to do we have to do the occlusal surface now that's the fun part this is what you want to have it's called a fish mouth because it's shaped like a fish mouth so if you don't have enough room here you're gonna be struggling on making the anatomy so if you make these ridges too thick then you're gonna have a very little amount of space here I even like to have more than this so what I'll do is I'm going to carve out a little bit more to give myself even more space even if you carve down all the way to the um, die it's not gonna hurt anything since we're not casting these or anything it will just give you more space to uh, work your occlusion so here we go we have a little bit more space now just like that so now we're gonna do the occlusion so we take a look at the side on the other side and take a look at this tooth here so we have the buccal triangular ridge the lingual triangular ridge together they're the transverse ridge you have the mesial cusp ridge the mesial buccal cusp ridge the buccal cusp the distal buccal cusp ridge follow me the distal marginal ridge right here distal marginal groove right here mesial marginal ridge right here mesial marginal groove right here we have the distal triangular groove right here the one that runs to the point angles of the tooth and it also runs on the same side with the buckle triangular ridge so distal buckle triangular groove mesial buckle triangular groove distal lingual triangular groove mesial lingual triangular groove these uh, depressions here are sometimes grooves 
they are secondary grooves so you could just name it uh, mesio buckle secondary groove disto buckle secondary groove if you want sometimes they're depressions sometimes they're grooves it depends on each person they're all different you see this too it's completely different from this one so let's let's start waxing this tooth so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to do the buckle triangular ridge which I forgot to mention this is the central groove right here and all the ridges start from the central groove So we're going to put in the buckle triangular ridge starting from the center of the tooth because that will form the central groove right there. So we're going to just go up and form like a teardrop and then it will end right at the cusp tip now at this point if you're not happy you put the like let's say you put too much wax or whatever then you can just scrape it out just like that and just put it in again. So let's put it in again. This time let's go exactly to the center. Oh too much heat. Back to the drawing board. So you wanna do this right away because it's quicker this way then having to finish the whole thing and then scrape everything out there's a little speck there let's take that out all right third time's the charm let's use a little less heat form a wide base at the bottom and then just pull it up to the top. Remember, like a teardrop, which is sort of like a triangle, but since teeth are not mechanical and they're not geometric, you want to use the wax. and its quality to become round when you heat it to make the ridge lifelike now we'll do the lingual triangular ridge the lingual triangular ridge sometimes it's defined and sometimes it's blended So let's see how it comes out. Okay, so it joins with the um, buckle triangular ridge right in the center, and these two form the transverse ridge because they are transverse to, to the tooth, it goes from one side to the other. Okay, so the next we're going to do is we're going to do a mesial ridge here since we have some room.
and then let me use yeah, this storage right here.